Welcome Sam's talk. Russell winds it, feeds it back across, Chuck in scores! Brady Kachuk makes it 2-0! Welcome to Sens Talk. My name is Brandon Plant and I am your host tonight. Ottawa took on the Columbus Blue Jackets in a game where, look, the Ottawa Senators are on a bit of a hot streak as of late. If they want to get even close, even close to somehow making a playoff push, it has to be now. The next little stretch here, Ottawa plays, of course, Columbus tonight. Anaheim on Thursday, and then Chicago as well later on. So the next three games are games Ottawa should win easily if they're serious about being a playoff team. But then that fourth team, Tampa Bay, would be one of those teams Ottawa would be chasing. They have had some success against them as well this year. So you never know. This little stretch here could be a big difference for the rest of the year for the Ottawa Senators going to this game. They're 16 points though out of a playoff spot. So obviously a long shot. They do have a few games in hand. But look, Ottawa going to this game is 6-1-2 in their last nine. They have won three straight games. Things are looking on the up. Before we get into the game recap though, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has nominated us for five different awards at the 2024 Ottawa Awards. It's an absolute honor. Just like last year, being nominated alone is an incredible honor. But you know what? You might as well win once you're nominated. Last year, we won the best YouTube channel in Ottawa in 2023, which was an incredible honor. Um, so you might as well win it again this year. So if you guys were interested in voting for us, I'll put the link to that in the description and comment section down below. But yeah, once again, thank you to everyone just for nominating us. It's an absolute honor. Uh, I'm so, so happy to see that so many of you guys love the work that we're putting out, the content we're putting out. It means the world to me. Now let's get back into the game recap. Now look, we'll talk about the suspension to Morgan Riley in the middle of the game recap. Really Greg might have scored today. So I'll talk about it then. It seems fitting. Um, but some lineup notes. Firstly, Artem Zub. We love him. But unfortunately, he would not be into tonight's game. And unfortunately, due to cap constraints, which is pretty unbelievable considering where we are in the standings, um, we couldn't call anyone up. So the Autumn Sanders had to dress five defensemen tonight. Of course, Sanderson remains out. McEwen was sent down to the AHL to activate Forsberg, who started tonight for the first time since January 11th. Uh, he was good, a little shaky at times, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but yeah, it's just unbelievable that we're in a cap crunch right now. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, we'll talk about the time on ice for the defenseman later. All of them basically did their job pretty decently overall. Um, so last thing I'll mention before we get into the game is... I'm not a fan of this, I'll be honest with you. The Ottawa Senators abruptly, last game against Toronto in that win on Saturday night, removed the danger flutes for some reason. Um, the intro was changed abruptly, middle of the season. Um, and Hell's Bells replaced it. Now, I got no issue with Hell's Bells. It's a fine song, whatever. You know, a lot of people like it, that's fine. But danger flutes was something that's been a part of the Ottawa Senators since inception, since their beginning, right? So... When you hear the danger flutes, you immediately think of the Ottawa Sanders. So it does suck. It really does suck if the danger flutes are officially gone. For Sense Talk, they'll always be here. I'll always include it at the end of my videos. But it does suck if this is it for danger flutes at the CTC. Uh, I also noticed that they got rid of the Zelda sound effect for the penalty kill. Don't really understand these decisions. I mean, it just worsens the in-game experience, to be honest with you. Uh, if you do want to switch up the intro, I totally get it. But to completely, completely remove... Uh, the Danger Flutes are not incorporated in some way, at least. Uh, I find very odd. I'll be honest with you. I find very, very odd, uh, especially since a lot of the OG fans, you know, from the 90s. But even the newer fans, like in the early 2000s, like myself, we love it. That's when we hear the, the Danger Flutes. It fires me up, for for example. I'm sure many of you guys up for the game. Uh, it's something unique to the, you know, the Ottawa Senators. And removing something like that for something more generic like Hell's Bells kind of sucks, to be honest with you. But... You know what? I uh, Zero Leader knows his community. Um, I'm sure it'll be back soon, but it is a little odd. Uh, they just removed it abruptly. Hopefully they incorporate it in some way sometime soon. Let me know what you guys think about that down below. There's been a lot of division on this topic on Sen's Twitter. A lot more people, I think, would support Danger Flutes coming back in some way. But also some people believe that there should be a bit of a change. So I think somewhere in the middle makes the most sense where... 
yeah, if you want to change up the intro, fine, but keep Danger Flute some way, one way or the other, I should say. Now let's get into the game recap. So the first pre go, and seven minutes in, after Ottawa plays pretty strong early on, Columbus will be the first one to strike. Voronkov banks one off JBD and in. Uh, JBD with the Jared Cowan treatment for the Ottawa Senators, and the Columbus Blue Jackets would strike first. They lead 1-0, but that lead would be short-lived. Two minutes later, El Capitano Brady Kachuk on the power play off a nice feed from Josh Norris. No doubt about it. Tie game 1-1. Brady Kachuk with his first of the night. 48 seconds later, here's his second. Patented steal from Brady Kachuk as he sneaks into the passing lane, intercepts the puck, turns on the Jets, goes on a 2-1, takes a shot, and puts home his own rebound for the home run goal. And Ottawa strikes back-to-back -back goals. Both from El Capitano, Brady Kachuk in 48 seconds, and Ottawa leads 2-1. Brady Kachuk, baby, El Capitano sends lead 2-1. That's Brady Kachuk's 22nd career multi-goal game. And then, of course, not so long after that, five or six minutes later, Claude Giroux, shorthanded with a steal, rips one glove side, top shelf, bar down. Ottawa goes up by two, it's 3-1, Senators what a goal here. Ottawa extends the lead by two. Claude Giroux is unbelievable how good he's been this year and throughout his career with the Ottawa Senators. It is going to be a travesty if the Senators do make the playoffs this year or especially next year and Claude Giroux doesn't get to play playoff minutes with the Ottawa Senators. It would be a travesty. He's easily playing some of his best hockey in his NHL career. And tonight alone, I mean, obviously getting that goal, getting shorthand in minutes shows how important he is to the team. But I mean, for a forward, okay, for a forward, the amount of ice time he had tonight, unbelievable. Just under 23 minutes at 22-26. He had a three-minute shift in the last couple of minutes with the net empty for Columbus. So, Claude Giroux, I mean, shout out to this guy. I just got to give him some love in the middle of the game recap because he was unbelievable tonight. And he played an absurd amount of minutes. This guy's 36 years old. He looks like he's a rookie. He looks like a brand new player in this league. Uh, and he carries his sentence as usual. Makes a 3-1 Ottawa. And then a few, maybe a minute or two later, Ottawa would score again. 4-1. Matty Joe looks to get another shorthanded goal um, as he puts one in past Tarasov. Uh, but this one was interesting because when he was going to the net, driving to the net, it was a loose puck. He jammed it in. Um, but Tarasov made the stop. The puck only went in because his pad turned. The pad that turned was the pad that Joseph ran into. Thus, they called it off for no goal for goaltender, or accidental, I should say, accidental goalie interference. As after 20 minutes of play, Ottawa, in an eventful period, would come out up by two. It's 3-1 sends. And then just over five minutes into the second period of play, things continue in the Ottawa Senator direction. And I guess this is where we're going to talk about Morgan Riley's suspension as really Greg, the Riddler, with back-to-back -back goals and back-to-back -back games, makes it 4-1 Senators. A nice tip out front. And Ottawa leads by three. It's 4-1. Shane Pinto and Vladdy Tarasenko draw the assists on the goal. Pinto, a nice play here to the draw. Two defenders towards him, leaving the top of the blue line open uh, to get that shot off there from the blue line area. That's eight points in eight games there for Shane Pinto as well since coming back. He's been on absolute heater. Of course, a difference maker for this team. And that top nine is firing on all cylinders right now because they have such good depth on all three lines. Frankly, you can make the argument for each of the Ottawa Senator top three lines to be the first line. That's how good they've been as of late as they make it 4-1 here. And really Greg with a grin on his face. He loved to see it as Morgan Riley today, but 30 or 45 minutes before puck drop was suspended. It was announced that he would be suspended, not shockingly, but he would be suspended for five games. He will miss the next five games um, since it was below six games. Um, the only way that Morgan Riley can appeal would be to directly, pardon me, to the NHL commissioner, uh, Gary Bettman. Don't expect that to happen. Uh, so he'll likely sit out the next five games. And I think this is the right call for a couple of reasons. Firstly, um, the NHL is looking to get rid of head checks. No doubt about it. Headshots, anything to the head, the National Hockey League wants to get rid of. Understandably, concussions are so dangerous, uh, they can alter lives, let alone careers. They can alter lives, which is more important than anything else. So they're trying to cut back from it. They're trying to get it out of the game. And of course, what Morgan Riley did to really Greg on Saturday night was nothing more than an extreme temper tantrum, no doubt about it. Um, and, you know, on top of the fact that, yeah, they want to make a, a point of this. They don't want to have headshots in the National Hockey League. I also believe, you know, for the situation at hand where you can make the case that, look, 
So it's a little cheeky what really Greg did, taking the slap shot. Um, if you wanted to drop the gloves there, that's one thing. But there's no reason to rush the kid and uh, give him a cross check to the head. You just can't have it in the National Hockey League. And clearly the Department of Player Safety agrees. A five-game suspension seems pretty fair. Around the National Hockey League, with similar situations, the NHL has usually suspended players between two to four games. But like I've already mentioned, they're trying to crack down on these headshots. Thus, the five-game suspension. Um, I think it's well-deserved for Morgan Riley. You just can't do it. I understand if you don't like what really Greg did, you drop the gloves then. You settle it like that. You don't take a cheap shot to the head. Just don't do it. And the National Hockey League clearly agrees. Five games, the right decision for sure. Let's continue on with the recap, though, in the second period of play. Five minutes later, after really Greg would give Ottawa a three-goal lead, that three-goal lead would be cut to two. As Boone Jenner beats Forsberg glove side on a goal that, frankly, Anton Forsberg must have. This one cannot go in. Glove side here on Forsberg. Just a goal that um, beats him, surprisingly. Um, on the right side, Jenner just walks in and fires it past Forsberg. Uh, Forsberg seems surprised that shot even came off. But regardless of him being surprised that the shot came off or not, his positioning was very off. That's a shot that was basically a floater. You have to stop it. Gives Columbus some momentum. And then three minutes later, they would capitalize again to cut the lead only to one as Jack Roslovich makes it a one-goal game on another weak goal here for Anton Forsberg, who cannot hug his post enough and gets beat low blocker side. They give Columbus a one-goal deficit. Luckily, though, for Ottawa, El Capitano and the Ottawa Senators are not taking no for an answer. Four and a half, five minutes later, Brady Kachuk on the power play with a bit of a spin move and puts it home for the Hattie. Throw the chapeaus. Brady Kachuk makes it a two-goal lead for Ottawa again. It's 5-3 Sanders. Shabbat and Claude Giroux with the assist on the goal as Brady Kachuk with his first hat-trick since 2021. His second hat-trick all-time in his National Hockey League career. Um, on a beautiful goal here. That's 25 goals on the year as well for Brady Kachuk, who's been dynamite this year. And the power play, we'll talk about it later. Very good as well tonight as Ottawa, after 40 minutes of play, leads by two again. It's 5-3 cents. And that was an interesting period because Anton Forsberg did not look great. I'll be honest with you. He did not look great in the second period of play. Um, those two goals there for Columbus just cannot go in. That first one off JBD, fair enough. Bad bounce. <laughs> Shout out to DJ Smith. By the way, actually shout out to DJ Smith. Just got a job with LA as their assistant coach. So shout out to him for that, genuinely. Um, but just funny because it's that tough bounce. But yeah, regardless, that first one can't blame him. Second and third have to blame him. Can't go in. Gives Columbus a chance. Luckily, though, Ottawa would end the period with a power play goal there. We go to the third period of play. And Ottawa would give up a couple of power plays um, you know, to Columbus. Luckily, they wouldn't be able to put it in. Tarasov. That goalie, I mean, he had a brutal save percentage tonight, but he looked strong. He made some really fun saves. I like this goalie. He just dives around and somehow he's like a magnet to the puck. He keeps on stopping it on the weird bounces. But uh, yeah, not a great game for Tarasov, obviously. Um, but, you know, I think he was fun to watch. I think if you're a Columbus fan watching this, you'd likely agree. This goalie is definitely fun to watch. Um, but yeah, Ottawa would kill off those power plays. And with eight seconds left, empty net for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Like I already mentioned in this video, Claude Giroux would be out there for three minutes with the empty net. Uh, really, Greg would get some empty net opportunities. With eight seconds left, Eric Brandstrom fires it into the empty net. Really, Greg looked who might have tipped that shot, but Brandstrom will get credited with the goal. Make it 6-3 Ottawa. Too bad he didn't clap bomb that one in. Too bad really Greg didn't clap bomb that one in, but it is what it is. As your sends win 6-3 over the Columbus Blue Jackets as Ottawa improves to 8-2-2 two and two in their last 12 games and have won four straight games as the sends now improve to 22-25-2 on the year. And the sends are slowly Little by little, getting back to the 500 mark and are now only 14 points out of a wild card spot. Right now, Detroit is when we'd be chasing with three games in hand. They are currently playing against Edmonton. Uh, it's unclear who won that game by the time you're watching this video. You probably know, but right now it's 10 o'clock. I got no idea. Uh, anyways, though, so yeah, big win for the Ottawa Sanders. As I already mentioned, the special teams tonight was fantastic. Power play 2 for 5, 40%. Rating there. The penalty kill 0 for 4 was Columbus on the power play. 4 for 4 on the penalty kill were the Ottawa Senators, including a shorthanded goal, which is always a nice touch. Um, but what I was really shocked about is Columbus outshot us big time by 39 to 30. They outshot us by 9 shots. They put on 39 shots. Columbus definitely was not the better team tonight. No doubt about it. Ottawa was the better team. 
clearly. They scored six goals. It's not shocking to say that. But it is a little surprising that, you know, Ottawa defensively as of late has been playing far, far better. And they haven't given up a lot of 30-plus shot games. So tonight, um, you know, Columbus was definitely the outlier in that. I'd probably credit the power play opportunities they got as a big reason why uh, they were in the 30-plus range. But regardless, I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, it definitely has to do with the fact Ottawa addressed five defensemen. Um, they were playing a lot of minutes on the blue line there. And you know what? Let's just segue to that because this is an interesting conversation to be had. I mean, the defensemen tonight were playing an unbelievable amount of minutes. I mean, Travis Hamannick just under 17 minutes at 16.54 with uh, two blocks and a hit tonight. You got Jacob Chikrin at 25.25 with four blocks and two hits tonight. You got Jacob Bernard Docker with just under 20 minutes of ice time uh, compiling two blocks and a hit and a shot on goal. In just under 20 minutes of ice time. And then you got guys like Tom Shabbat. I mean, Tom Shabbat, you know how he does it when he needs to play a lot of minutes. He does so effortlessly. Just under 30 minutes at 28-34. Three blocks, two hits, a shot on goal, and an assist as well. So Shabbat played fantastic. And Brandstrom as well. Obviously got that goal. But as well had three, uh, you know, hits. It was pretty physical. Um, and played just under 23 minutes at 22-33. So the defensemen did their job with a five-man rotation. Once again, it's absolutely insane that the Sens are in such cap trouble. Um, but they did very, very well. And then, like I've already mentioned, Claude Giroux at an absurd amount of minutes. I mean, just an absurd amount of minutes. Almost 23 minutes. Um, it's just insane how many minutes this guy gobbles up. Um, he's so, so good. You got Timmy Stu at 20 minutes. Quiet night for him. Three shots and goal. Almost got a goal in Tarasov. Drew a penalty, though. But, uh, yeah, overall, Ottawa played pretty decent overall. Um, pretty even game. Throughout the lineup. That top nine for Ottawa contributed offensively in all fronts. But you know that fourth line drew a couple of power plays as well. Parker Kelly got some minutes as well with Norris and Kachuk. Um, so everyone in the fourth court is doing their part. Um, and then on the defensive side of things. Once again, five defensemen. I don't care what team you're playing against. That's going to be tough. So kudos to them. And then lastly, Anton Forsberg. 925 save percentage. 40 shots against. 37 saves. Three goals allowed for a 925 save percentage. A pretty solid effort from Anton Forsberg. A couple of shaky goals there in the second period of play. But overall, a pretty strong performance. And he gets his third win all time against the Columbus Blue Jackets in his NHL career. Now the next Sens game is on Thursday against the Anaheim Ducks. That's going to be a big, big game as Ottawa looks to win five in a row and get back a little closer into the playoff race. Besides that, thank you all for watching. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below as always. I'll see you all in the next one. Go Sens Go!